Welcome. During this video, we'll be looking at energy changes during a change of phase. Change of phase refers to when a substance moves from one particular phase to another, say from solid to liquid or liquid to gas, or in fact from gas to liquid or liquid to solid. So first of all, let's have a look at today's question. We're asked to calculate the amount of heat to convert 2.5 kilograms from a temperature of minus 20 degrees Celsius to water at a temperature at 40 degrees Celsius. Now before we attempt this question, it's probably worth looking at visually. Okay, here's our graph. You've got one, two, three distinct sections. Let's label them. Okay, this first section has a constant gradient, and this represents when our H2O is in a solid state. Our first section is solid H2O. We commonly refer to that as ice. This second section, where we have it along the zero temperature, it's flat, and we describe this as melting. It's a change of phase. Okay, this is where our solid is converting into or changing phase into a liquid. Our third section is again a constant gradient and this represents the region of liquid. It's what we commonly refer to as water. Let's examine these in more detail. In the first section here, where our ice is solid, we find there's a change in temperature. Ice is actually heating up. In our second section, there is no change in temperature. The temperature remains at zero. And once again, when we get in our third section, that also has a change in temperature. So there's two different equations we need to use when we're calculating the energy that has to be put into this system to raise ice from 20 degrees below zero to water at temperature of 40 degrees above zero. Let's consider those two different equations. In our first section where there's solid ice, there is a delta T, we have a mass, and there is a specific heat capacity for ice. So we can work out the heat put into this system by Q equals MC delta T, the heat energy required to raise this ice from minus 20 to zero. Likewise, in section three, there's also a delta T, a change in temperature. So this one also can be used by the calculation of Q equals MC delta T. A different specific heat capacity to solid ice, this time it's for liquid water, and the delta T is different as well. It goes from zero to 40. In the middle section here, we have also heat energy being invested. Although it doesn't result in a change in temperature. This is called the latent heat of fusion. It's the amount of energy that needs to be invested into our system or absorbed by our system in order for the bonds that are formed in ice to be broken to allow it to be changed into liquid. So during this period of heat absorption, we find that there is no change in temperature. So at the start of this linear section, it is all ice. And by the time we get to the end, all those bonds have been broken, it's completely liquid. So there's an equation we can use, Q equals MLF, where Q is the amount of energy being absorbed, M is the mass of the material, and L is the latent heat of fusion. Let's break this into three different sections. Okay, these three sections. We've got energy being used to heat the ice. We've got energy being used to change the phase. And we've got energy being used to heat the water. So in this first section of the graph, we have solid ice. This second section represents the change of phase from solid to liquid. And this third phase is completely liquid. There's an increase in temperature, a delta T. There's no change in temperature for the second section. And once again, there's an increase in temperature in the third section, the heating of the water when it's liquid state. So the three equations we use, Q equals MC delta T for the first section, Q equals M latent heat of fusion for the second section, and Q equals MC delta T for the third section.
So there's their variables, Q equals question mark, the heat energy, M is 2.5 kilograms, and latent heat diffusion, when we're going from ice to water, is 3.3 .3 by 10 to the 5 joules for every kilogram. So there's the amount of energy required to completely melt 2.5 kilograms of ice to water. And finally, we're looking at how much energy does it take to raise water at zero up to a temperature of 40 degrees Celsius. That's using the Q equals MC delta T. That's the amount of energy required to completely heat water starting at zero degrees Celsius to a temperature of 40 degrees Celsius. So in total, the amount of energy required to raise 2.5 kilograms of ice starting at minus 20 degrees Celsius up to zero, then melting that into complete liquid, then heating that to 40 degrees Celsius as a liquid is 1.3 by 10 to the 6 joules. You've been watching a Juddy Productions video. If you've enjoyed and indeed learned something from this video, then please remember to like, share, comment, and subscribe. And as always, thanks for watching.